Hi everyone, thanks for joining. <clears throat> We're gonna give it a few minutes while people um, hop on. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. We're just gonna give it a few minutes uh, while people sign on. We've got about 40 people who we are expecting. So we're gonna give it a few minutes. Hi guys, welcome if you're just joining. We're gonna give it a few minutes while we wait for everyone to log on. Hi to those of you who have just joined. We're going to give it a few minutes while everyone signs on.
Hi, everyone. Just going to give it, um, let's see. We'll give it two more minutes right till eight o'clock. <clears throat> Okay, we'll give it one more minute and then we'll get started. Okay, let's see. So we're at about half of the people who are here, but we're going to record so that if people join us late, um, they can jump on and listen to it. We'll get this posted online. So hi, everyone. Welcome. For those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Lori Field, and I am the Associate Executive Director of Family Programming at the JCC in Rochester, and also serving now as the Director of Camp Seneca Lake. Uh, it's been... Um, a real ride since March um, when I took over in the midst of the middle of planning for a summer. And, and today is really the beginning of a fresh new journey. I've, I'm really excited that we, we have registration open today. Um, and I'm really grateful that all of you are taking time out of your evening to learn about what our plans are, to be able to ask questions and for us to have uh, start really a really great dialogue that I think we're going to continue over the next couple of months. Uh, for my Buffalo Bills fans out there, go Buffalo. Great game today. I see some of my Buffalo families are here. Um, <clears throat> feel free to use the chat for questions. Um, I found that with this presentation, a lot of information is kind of weaved in throughout the presentation. And so it's best for us to save questions at the end. So if you think of a question and you don't want to forget it, feel free to throw it in the chat um, and I will make sure to, to go through it um, when we visit, finish the presentation. And if there's something urgent that you wanna jump in, feel free to always just unmute yourself and, um, and jump in. We're all just one big happy family here. Everyone can hear me okay? Okay, awesome, wonderful. So as Neil, Amy, myself, the JCC Board of Directors, our CSL Advisory Council started to talk about the possibility of being able to open camp for summer 2021, the, the thing that was on our mind the most was our mission. And going back to what is it that we want to accomplish? Why are we here? And what is it that we want for our children and for our staff and for our community? So I wanted to start tonight by reviewing and sharing with you the mission of Camp Seneca Lake. Our mission is to provide a fun, adventurous program with immersive experiential learning that builds Jewish identity, facilitates personal exploration, cultivates an appreciation of nature, and establishes the importance of Jewish community. As I was getting ready to prepare for this presentation, I was really thrilled that the American Camping Association had published an article earlier this week that you can actually locate on their website titled 2021 looks to be another COVID-19 summer camp in the time of COVID-19. The article discusses how camps that operated last summer, so in summer 2020, reported a camp reimagined experience with dates that were shifted, occupancy limited, public health measures in place and programs altered to meet the new reality of this COVID-19 pandemic. Our goal together tonight is to share with you how we will plan, how we will prepare and how we plan to operate this summer. 
if we are, of course, allowed. And I'm actually, I've got the article. Well, it's not going to let me copy. I will set, put it in the chat box at the very end um, so that you have a copy of the article. As we get started and I talk to you about our plan, I want to share with you some of the partners that we have really been blessed to collaborate and learn with since this past March. As you'll see, some of the camps that um, regionally we might might be our competitors, Camp Corey and Camp Whitman, we have been working very closely with um, Aaron Cantor, who was our previous camp director, who's now the director at Emma Kaufman. Um, has, we've been working close with, along with the American Camping Association and all of our health partners across the country. So we've, we've really um, made sure that we are staying connected to what camps across the country are doing, as well as what our camps regionally are doing so that we can, in some ways, make decisions together and make sure that we can best support each other. So the article that I spoke to you about released data through the American Camping Association that suggests that camps that successfully prevented and mitigated COVID-19 among campers and staff used multiple strategies, including masks, cohorts, distancing, frequent hand washing, and enhanced sanitation. We are expecting some additional information over the next couple of weeks. There should be analysis that should be coming out from the American Camping Association from the Camp Counts 2020 survey that was conducted um, in October. As soon as we have that information and as we learn more, we're gonna be sharing that with you. Um, my goal is that these Zoom sessions become a regular and that as we're learning more information that we're getting together and sharing that information and talking as a community. So while we've begun to outline our concrete plans for summer 2021, I would say that a good majority of our specific strategies are still in development and of course are subject to change. So every day, as you know, in your personal and school lives and professional lives, you think you know what's going on and then something shifts. And we're really here to make sure that we're prepared um, as there continue to be shifts. So as we talked about getting ready to open camp registration, we needed to make some, some assumptions. We needed to make some initial decisions, which were really challenging. Um, I grew, spent 13 summers at Camp Seneca Lake as a camper and as a counselor. I started in 1992 as a camper and ended in 2004 as um, a CIT unit head. And I know how important it is to make sure that our campers have a normal summer. I also know how important it is to make sure that our campers have a safe summer. So we are going to make sure that we work on um, having a plan for COVID-19 testing prior to arrival, that we follow and support our New York State, the travel guidelines, which many of you may know, New York State just changed their guidelines just a couple of days ago. We are going to implement capacity modifications. We are going to have to work on what our mask protocols are. We're gonna have cohorts of some sort. We unfortunately have suspended our busing to and from camp and our travel outside of camp will be limited. Now this list sounds very negative, um, but I want you to know that this list was created to really make sure that camp can be a safe place that we can all be together. So this summer we can accommodate at any given session, 158 campers. We made a decision to age up camp so traditionally, our youngest campers have been entering third grade. And for this summer, for right now, because anything can change, for right now at this moment, we are having our youngest campers be entering fourth grade or uh, nine years old by June 1st, 2021. A couple of reasons why we made that decision that I want to share with you. First and foremost, we wanted to make sure that we could accommodate our current campers. So when we looked at the landscape of who our current campers are, we wanted to make sure that those campers hopefully will not be turned away. We only had a few third graders from last summer who attended camp. So we know that we have space for them. And every once in a while, there is a second grader who slips in because they, um, depending on where they live, 
they're entering grade for they're entering age for kindergarten reflects differently. And we didn't have any of those campers entering right now. So no one is being turned away. Um, our campers will be in the same cohort as they were in 2020. So as you, many of you may know, um, for two groups in particular this summer, the cancellation of this summer was particularly painful. And that was for our Tusk campers and for our CSL and Israel campers. There were many reasons why we decided to age up camp for this summer, but giving the opportunity to those campers, which combined is over 80, 80 campers, the opportunity to have their culminating summer was really important to us. Um, in this world where there's nothing that's normal, if we could provide them some sort of sense of normalcy, we felt, we felt really good about that decision. And as a community, hopeful that we could all come together and to be able to support that. We know that masks will be a part of camp. The details around what that's going to look like, we're gonna wait for guidance from the Department of Health. Um, we know what we did this past summer when we operated our family camp programs but we know that the best thing is to wait for, for that guidance. At this time, again, we've suspended our transportation to and from camp, because as you all know, those of you who have busing to school, that the busing has changed. And so for us to be able to double or triple our busing to get our kids safely to and from camp would be very challenging and very difficult financially. Um, and for right now, we've also suspended our village days and our trips. And we're going to focus on that beautiful 200 acres of land that we own and our incredible staff. We're going to program differently than we have in the past and take advantage of every piece of land that campers haven't even explored yet. Um, this past week I was at camp and of my all of my years, I found myself in a new spot that I had never been to before. So I have full confidence that um, we're going to be able to make up for those trips and find new engaging ways to connect with our campers. The most important, the, the biggest question that I've received so far is why can't we create a bubble test and have quote unquote a more norm normal summer. And I think when when we say the word normal in camp for those of us who grew up going to camp or have had our kids at camp long enough, we know what that means. That means color war that means fight song that means being able to sleep in the places that we're used to sleeping and we are gonna to try to have a normal summer, but the most important thing for us, well, there's two most important things, safety, but also making sure that we don't turn away our current campers. So as I mentioned, we can fit 158 campers at any given session at camp, which usually means that during a session, we have about 200 to 250 campers who come on a regular summer between, in any given session. So between those 200 and 250 campers, if we were to create a bubble and do, let's say one big lockdown, we would have to turn away a tremendous amount of our campers. And I truly believe that that's not who we are as a community and that I would rather give every, as many kids a taste of camp if we can do it safely as possible than to have a lottery and turn away campers. Many camps, in full transparency are choosing not to open registration at this time. They're waiting to hear more information. They're waiting to see where, where schools go. They're waiting for guidance from the Department of Health. We really felt that it was important for our camp community to begin the discussions, to put out an initial plan, to see how our community felt, and then to be able to prepare and pivot as we learn more information. In the model of 158 campers per um, session, that will safely allow us to have between six to eight campers in each cabin with two staff members. So we have gone through every inch of, of camp and measured all of our cabins to make sure that we, at this plan, are accommodating to have a six foot distance between our campers and feel really confident that we can fit six to eight campers comfortably. Um, the six to eight just vary. Some of our cabins, as you guys know, are bigger than others. <clears throat> if, we, if we had created this bubble um, and ran the two, the two three and a half week sessions as we have historically, we would have to turn kids away. And again, we just really felt strongly that in this initial presentation, 
of um, what camp could look like for this summer after all of the loss that our kids have had, taking away the loss of camp was not something that we wanted to do. We're gonna to continue to learn about best practices in our collaboration with our strategic partners from across the country. And once we receive our guidance from New York State and Yates County, we will pivot our plan uh, in order to open safely. So if there are things that we need to do that aren't in this plan, we'll just make changes and we will make sure to communicate with our families and give you an opportunity to uh, pull your children out with full refund if the plan, the new plan that we might have to present um, doesn't work for you. So let's talk a little bit about life at CSL and what it's gonna look like this summer. So as I mentioned to you, um, in order to be able to open, we're gonna to need to get that approval from first New York State and then from Yates County. Our Yates County Department of Health Assessor is absolutely wonderful. She was so supportive of us running camp, uh, family camp programming last summer and I speak with her on a regular basis and we're really excited about being able to partner with her as we learn more information. This shows you a little bit about what the aging up will look like. Um, as of right now, we are operating under the assumption that we cannot use platform tents. So the platform tents themselves are a decent size, but the minute you put more than one bed in a platform tent, you cannot maintain six feet of distance. So there's been some questions in some of the previous presentations that I've given. Well, if they're that close together and you know they've had negative tests, why not be able to allow them to live there? And even though that might be true, even with camps that have done bubbles this past summer, they were still required to have their campers be at a six foot distance. And one of the things that would be a, the worst nightmare would be to find out two weeks before camp that we couldn't use a village we were planning on using and have to completely scramble to come up with a new plan. So we're operating under the assumption that we can't use it. And our fingers are crossed that perhaps it might change at the last minute. But if that is the plan, we will have our senior campers live in Mohawk. Um, one side of the bathroom will be for the boys. One side of the bathroom will be for the girls. They will be in uh, the same gender cabin. So, you know, it'll still be, uh, they'll still be separate and with counselors um, on, different, on different sides and different cabins. So then that leaves us three villages fit three physical spaces for four villages. So here's our initial plan. Um, our oldest girls will stay in Seneca. Our oldest boys will live in Cayuga. And for right now, we are thinking that our youngest campers will live in Onondaga, the boys and the girls. Again, they because those cabins have their own private bathrooms, we they will not, boys and girls will not share cabins. Um, they will have their own bathrooms, their staff will be living with them. But in order to accommodate everyone at camp and not have to end one of our programs this summer, we felt that with the right staff that we hired in this village, that we could safely keep our youngest campers um, in a reimagined village. We are working with the Department of Health on if we can bring in temporary structures, if there's other things that we can do, but there's no promises yet. And so we have to work with what we have at the, this moment in time. Um, so with registration, uh, as you know, as, as you've read in the operating playbook um, that we sent out, Right now, you are there's early bird registration that's open, um, and we're going to see how the registration goes to figure out if perhaps we can move those seventh graders into the older village. We recognize that developmentally and physically having fourth graders with seventh graders is not best practice. And so as, as we watch registration come in each week, um, over the next couple of weeks, but for each of the sessions, we will evaluate and see if we can move groups of kids around to get uh, all of the older kids together. This looks different. It, kids have been waiting their entire lives to move up to certain villages. And I know that while it feels different and while it sounds different, that the spirit and the Ruach of Seneca Lake will still be there. That in previous years, different villages have, different groups have lived in different places. When I was a CIT in August, we lived in a village, we lived in a in a bunk in Cayuga. 
So there were CIT girls living in Cayuga. We've had female um, unit heads for boys. So we know that in the history of Seneca Lake that we've had to make some of these changes before and that we've worked through them. And I'm really confident that we'll be able to do that for this summer. For our CSL in Israel and CIT program, we're having a special separate Zoom session to talk about their program on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, if your child or children are, are eligible to go to Israel uh, and you don't have the link for that Zoom session, send me an email and I will get you all signed up. So uh, as we start to talk about our um, our life, our life at CSL, our programming, I think is one of the big questions that have come in. I have gotten so many emails that warm my heart from parents who say, can you just tell me when color war is? I won't tell my kid, but I just want to register them. When is color war? So th the truth of the matter is, is that we don't know what our programming is going to look like. I, I'm going to continue to use this word program reimagined because the programming that your kids know, that your campers know, is probably gonna look different this coming summer, but with the same spirit. So will we have fight song? Probably not. I don't think any of you want 60 kids standing on the stage of the OREC, screaming really loud in a small tight space. But can we come up with a new program that maybe takes on and that becomes the new greatest best thing of camp? Probably. And will they be okay? Yeah. Did I grow up with fight song or color war? Nope, never heard of it until I, until I started to learn about, about what we were doing these days at camp. I just had mass program and it was planned by our staff about 10 minutes before the program started. And I thought it was the best thing in the world. So we're gonna, this is an opportunity for us to create new memories with our campers. But in these two week sessions, this is um, just a little bit of an outline to show you that we made sure that all the campers will experience and be able to celebrate Shabbat twice at camp. We will make sure that we have an opening and a closing ceremony to celebrate and commemorate our time together. We will still have a bunk night and village night and all camp programs and some sort of signature program. But will it be what it was last summer? Probably not. But you know what? It might just be a little bit better. We'll see. So let's talk a little bit about COVID-19. Um, well, let's talk a lot about COVID-19 actually. Um, so this past summer, as you know, when we canceled traditional camp at Seneca Lake, we opened up fam long weekend um, family retreats and some day programs. And I'm really proud to share with you that we had over 700 individuals come through our gates this past summer, where we required temperature checks, health assessments, sanitation and disinfection between each activity period, as well as deep disinfection between sessions using an electrostatic sprayer, which is a backpack with like a water gun and you feel like a superhero and you go around and you can spray every inch of camp. So we feel that going into summer 2021, that we feel really confident that we know our landscape. We know our land. We know what it takes to clean and to turn camp over. And it puts us ahead of the game a little bit in terms of being able to prepare to welcome all of our campers onto camp. So as our landscape is continually changing, even though we've been learning and trying things out, we're not gonna know a lot of these protocols until earlier this summer. A lot of the case studies that are out um, have indicated that the biggest theme is ensuring that health pre-camp behaviors start at home. And so as we learn more, we will be working with you guys on what things we need to do to prepare our campers and our staff to come to camp. I anticipate that we'll have a more robust uh, COVID-19 playbook that we will share and review with all of you much closer to camp. If we were to write it today, as you all know, it would look so different uh, by the time we opened camp that it's almost not worth getting started yet and just continuing to learn the landscape. So we do know though that our specific strategies for what we need to do are gonna be, are gonna be the same as what we did last year. And so what, what we 
what we want to create is something fun and catchy that the kids are going to remember. So we've got a six point safety plan and that's about camper safety, staff safety, hand washing, cleaning and disinfection, reasonable contact reduction and symptom management. As you can see, this is a picture of um, a board that we had at, outside of athletics for this summer. And on it, it has the cleaning protocols as recommended by the CDC, the athletic protocols for the CDC, and then for family camp where things were a little bit more up to the family's discretion to decide what they wanted to do, uh, the low, medium and high risk activities that the CDC had indicated people should know about before they go and uh, play baseball or basketball. So we're gonna continue this. We found that you know, visual learning is really important in having signs and multiple ways for our campers and staff to be reminded of staying healthy and clean is really important. We plan to expand our healthcare team. Um, so we will be adding more nurses to our team. Uh, we will be reimagining what our, what our policies are for when a kid needs to go to the infirmary and isn't feeling well. Um, this past summer, most camps had a triage tent and you either went left if you had some COVID symptoms or right if you didn't. And we will set up something similar as well. We're gonna be adding sanitation stations throughout camp. Uh, any of the places where we have regular water fountains, we'll replace them with the cup water fountains. Um, and we're, we're gonna to continue to work on what sort of physical things we need to change and improve to get ourselves ready for this coming summer. Oops, sorry, hold on, there we go. So as you know, food is a huge part of COVID and making sure that we stay healthy. Wolf Foods, um, run and owned by Michael Wolf, who is a CSL alum, will be, offer, will be running our kitchen this uh, summer again. We're really lucky because Michael and his company actually ran five kitchens at overnight camps across the country last summer. So he is joining us with a wealth of knowledge and experience on not only what works in the kitchen, but his team was a part of conversations about what works at camp. And we have been having weekly phone calls with Michael, um, starting to prepare for what sort of changes do we need to be able to make to our dining hall and to our kitchen to prepare to open it for the summer. So some of the things that we're working on that we're talking about is the style of service, the sanitation standards of operation, the kind of serviceware we're gonna be using, meaning are we gonna keep using plastic or might we have to move to paper just for the summer? A reconfiguration of our dining hall, self-service stations need to be reimagined and our dining hall procedures need to change. Um, one of the things that I think anyone who has spent a minute at Seneca Lake would agree is that the spirit and the connection at the dining hall is bar none. It gives you chills when you think about it, but we have to stay safe. So we'll find new ways to connect and to sing and to show our ruach with our community. Um, there, we may have two seatings. Uh, there may be, we may rotate. Maybe it's, you know, half the week is older villages and younger villages. And then maybe we rotate it so people can see other people or we keep it the same because of cohorts. This past summer, we had lots of tables outside. Um, what worked well about that is that adults were able to move the table so that it wasn't in the sun. So one of the things we're looking at is getting one of those big party tents to put in front of the dining hall so that the tables could be under the tents. We'd have the great ventilation and the kids would be in the shade. Um, we're really conscious of this summer of making sure that we have more spaces than in the past to keep the kids in the shade, but with good ventilation of being outside. Michael, um, will we will have a, a more in-depth presentation about food and food service as it relates to COVID as we get closer to camp. So let's move into talking about finances and rates. So the rates that um, we released for the two-week sessions, I'm going to separate that out from the one-week session, are consistent with the two-week rates from last summer. There are some changes, um, some add-ons, but the, the core rate of what the camp costs is the same. 
Now you might say, but you took away trips and you took away the busing. And so how did you stay at that number? So there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about and make you aware in terms of how we came to this price. So the cost to open camp still remains the same. It doesn't matter if we have five kids coming to camp or we're gonna get 450 kids through camp for the summer, just to get that camp up and running still costs the same amount. There is gonna be an increase in food costs. So Michael has and Wolf Foods have asked us to prepare for about a 4% increase in food costs. And that is really due to COVID and the difficulty of being able to get food. We also, as you know, as we just talked about, have a reduced camper capacity per session. So we're used to being able to take the cost to operate camp and dividing it out by 250 campers. And now we're dividing it out by 150, you know, 56, 58 campers. There's two additional things that you should have noticed that are um, different from our general rates. We have a COVID fee that we mentioned that we may need to add in June. We're not, we're not charging that right now. We're just leaving that as a disclaimer that if COVID is still prevalent in June, we may need to add on an additional fee to cover paying for additional healthcare staff, additional cleaning staff for the supplies that we need, the personal protective equipment, and the changes that we'll need to make around camp, like I said, renting some party tents, making changes to our dining hall, all of the things that we'll need to do to make camp safe to be able to open it for summer 2021. We also added a fee on for intercession camp, and we're going to talk more about intercession camp in a second. Um, but in the past, intercession has been um, a free cost. This summer with COVID, uh, we need to be able to make sure that we disinfect the cabins. And so the, the campers who need to stay over or who want to stay over um, are going to require a different sort of setup than we've done in the past because we're going to be deep cleaning. So the program is going to be more like what your campers may have referred to as TU Leem, which is our hiking nature program. And so we're going to be exploring camp and camping at camp, um, keeping them one camper per tent. If they're with their siblings, they can stay with their sibling. A lot of the details around this program are still being worked out as we learn more about COVID. Um, but we recognized that for some of our families, specifically who were traveling in from out of town and wanted their campers to be able to attend more than one session, that it could be really challenging for them to come to take those kids for a couple of days. But we also know that if we just kept camp going, we wouldn't be able to accommodate all of the kids that, that we want to. A couple of other changes that I wanted to talk about, and before I dive into these, it's really important for me to share with you, um, as many of you are JCC members in Rochester know that COVID-19 has impacted our finances at the Rochester JCC significantly. And we've had to make some really tough decisions that were decisions that we didn't wanna make, but that we needed to make in order to make sure that we could sustain our financial viability for the JCC and for the future of Camp Seneca Lake. So our decision to change some of these policies was truly not to make anyone feel included or excluded, but was based on what we knew our financial picture was and how we needed to make sure that we could survive for this summer. In the past, we have allowed and honored um, outside JCC memberships and, and given, that, given that as a reciprocity. Uh, our decision to change that policy regarding membership discounts was challenging because we knew that it would affect a significant portion of our out of town families. While we historically have honored it, we've never received financial contributions from the JCCs who have helped to help cover the difference in cost. So we've eaten that cost as a goodwill of thanking you for being a member of a JCC, even though it wasn't our own. Other JCCs are not in a position to be able to subsidize enrollment at a camp that does not contribute to their revenue. And we actually talked with um, the CEO of the Buffalo JCC before we made this decision. Now we didn't reach out to every JCC, but we have a lot of Buffalo families who we knew that this would impact. And, and the CEO was aware that we had to make this change. And again, while it was difficult for him, he knew that he wasn't in, in the financial place to be able to offer that discount as well. 
Um, we also unfortunately cannot offer sibling or refer a friend discounts at this time. Our deposits are going to be fully refundable until we receive approval to open. So we don't know when that's going to be, but it's really important that we recognize that as families, you are making a really big decision and things could change and the landscape for your family could change and your comfortability could change. And so once we receive that approval from New York State and Yates County, you'll then receive communication from us as well as an opportunity to join some Zoom sessions before we say that deposits change from fully refundable to something else. So you might say, well, what is that something else? And my response is, I'm not sure yet. We're gonna work on what our policies are. Um, we wanna work with other camps. We wanna learn about what other camps are doing. We recognize that finances, that camp is expensive without COVID. And now the impact of COVID on our families has taken a really big hit. And so we wanna make sure that our policies are um, kind to our families, but also make sure that it, it were that the JCC is okay with the decisions that we make. So more information on that will come. Um, but again, you're you will only be charged upon once you apply for camp and we enroll you. You will only be charged that deposit and nothing else until we get approval. Uh, we are going to continue to offer financial aid. Uh, some of you may know it as camperships, as we have in the past but the process is gonna look a little bit different. So in the past, our campership applications have been rolling. So you've been able to apply for campership at, at any point in time. And when you apply, your application was reviewed and then you would receive uh, a letter indicating how much money camp was able to help subsidize. For this year, we are going to um, have our applications open and available for you to apply from November 1st to December 31st. Once we receive all of our applications, we will then process them. And then in early February um, or late January, we will, we will award the money. Um, it's the same money, we're, we have the same money. We just wanna make sure that our process is a little bit cleaner um, so that we can take care of all of our families in the way that we would like to. We recognize that things come up past December 31st. Tragedies happen, health bills come in, people lose their jobs. And, and so we want to make sure that you know that if something comes up and it is outside of this window, please reach out and, and talk to us. Um, and, and we will make sure that we can try to help you to the best of our ability. So what's next? We're almost to the point where we can, we can open up for Q&A. So today is Sunday, November 1st, which is so crazy. We're having our town hall registration open this morning. We are, um, registration is actively happening. We parents are registering every couple of minutes. I go in and new campers have registered and that's just warmed my heart so much all day. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a CSL in Israel and CIT info session on Wednesday. If you are near Camp Seneca Lake and would like to stop by on Sunday, November 8th for a socially distant visit, camp will be open from 12 to four. The fall foliage is absolutely magnificent. Amy, Neil and myself will be there um, to answer questions, to introduce ourselves. Um, we will ask much like we did this past summer that all of our guests sign a release form that we'll have, complete a health assessment and have a temperature checked. And just a public service announcement, we do not have working bathrooms. So should you decide to come, just plan accordingly that we don't have working bathrooms. And Meredith, all I can see is your laughing face and it's making me really happy that you're laughing at my bathroom. <laughs> um, early bird registration will stay open until Sunday, November 15th. And then we don't open regular general registration until the 18th because we're gonna use those couple of days to make sure that we understand all of our current campers and what their re registration requests were and make sure that we can accommodate their needs before we open up general registration. So you will know before Wednesday, November 18th, what your child, what we can offer your child. You will have put in your application request. We will be able to process it. You will know what sessions your campers are going for. And if you want to be able to put them on a wait list for another session, you can do so. 
Freda, thank you so much for, um, for throwing that in and that jumps us right into uh, the Q&A portion of our evening. I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can actually see all of your faces, which makes chatting so much easier. So uh, Meredith, Freda sent you the link. Um, we also have in the information packet that I sent you, uh, Adam Drexler is our um, sales manager and he can help you with learning about our membership options. So feel free to um, unmute yourself, send in a question to the chat box. There's no question that's off, that's, uh, off the table. So ask away. Hey, hey Mari, it's Paula. How do, how do you want us to do it? Oh, okay. So what I think, I, uh, who did I just hear? I know Robin, all right, Robin, you start, you have your hand up. Okay, question about a vaccine. Yes. If the vaccine, I mean, I know that they're just starting to study 12 and over mm -hmm. for the vaccine. If the vaccine becomes available by the time camp starts, I know it's like such a futuristic question. Do you think that's gonna be a requirement for some, for the staff and the kids who are eligible to get it? It's a great question, Robin. So one of the things that I forgot to mention, and I'm so glad you asked this question because I'm gonna share some information and then answer your question. So one of the things that we're gonna be doing is putting together our COVID-19 medical committee. I had a few of our um, camp physicians and nurses serve on a committee with me this past spring that helped us to understand uh, scenario planning before we ultimately made the decision to cancel camp. I bring this up because I am not the right person. I am not a physician. I'm not the right person to make that decision for our camp. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together a group of really well-trained physicians and nurses and medical professionals in our community and in our, our Rochester community and our broader camp community that can help us understand things like this and make some decisions. So Part of what I want you all to know about me um, personally and as a director is that I wanna be fully transparent and I want you to feel okay when I say I'm not sure about the answer. And Robin, this is one of those questions that I wouldn't feel comfortable answering alone. Oh, okay. no, sorry. We're gonna put a group of people together to work on the answer. Because if the vaccine exists and the numbers really go down, yep. then, then your plans from before with the masking and mm -hmm. not, the not tenting, I mean, I know this is like, you can't even answer these questions, yeah. but is there a possibility that those restrictions would lift yep. if miraculously this vaccine decreases, there's a vaccine, everyone feels more comfortable. Okay. Yep. And my last, my, my, my last question is about, I don't know if you can answer this. If there is someone who's positive in the group mm -hmm. and the whole group now needs to leave in quarantine for 14 days, there to a whole summer. Um, are you going to figure out ways for those quarantine kids to get their money back? Because yes. that yes. would be like a yes. 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 Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that are in the chat box. And then those of you who want to ask questions can do that as well. Um, Jenny just asked about the, where to register. And I just sent you the link. And, um, if you're still having trouble, the wonderful Amy, who is on zoom with us tonight, our assistant director of camp operations is happy to help you with registration. I ask that you just be kind and patient. She's one person for a lot of families. So shoot her an email and she will, um, she will get back to you as soon as she can. Uh, how many sessions can you register for and can you request other campers to be with? Great question. You are allowed to register for as many sessions as you would like. So when we say that you might not get every session that you request, let me use an example. So let's say I'm gonna use my daughter Avery and her best friend Vivian. So let's say Avery and Vivian are both entering fifth grade. Avery has signed up for all seven weeks and Vivian only wants to go for one week. And Avery's taking that slot. And if we pulled her from that one week, Vivian would get to have one week at camp. Those are the kinds of, um, well, dominoes that we're gonna play um, to be able to make sure that we try to accommodate our campers coming. So, so what we would do is we would call Avery's parents and we would say, so at this time we can get your camper in for six weeks and we're gonna put you on the wait list for week number seven. 
Our hope is that we can accommodate everyone, but with our reduced numbers, we just don't want to make any false promises. In terms of um, requests for campers, in the application, there is a place for you to put uh, camper re requests for bunkmates. So when people have reached out and said, I want to make, try to make sure that my kid gets in the same session as another friend, if they're in the same, they would be in the same bunk, just put them in their request as the bunkmate. Um, can I review the session dates and the lengths of the sessions? Absolutely. Um, so I am, Deborah, if you give me one second, I am actually going to, I think I should be able to attach and send this. Let me just. Lori. Yeah? Lori, can you hear me? Yes. It's Karen Small. Hi, Karen. I, only because I'm doing it while everyone's doing it. Hi. What's happening is that everyone's going into Camp Minder into their account. Yeah. And that's not where the link to register is. So when you're on the Camp Seneca Lake page, if you go to the left hand side of the column, there's like a million choices. And, and if you hit register there, it brings you up to the registration. But I think what everyone's doing is that they're going into their account and can't mind her first. And then there's no, it's the link isn't in the account once you're in there. Does that make sense to whoever's asking? Cause I happen to be doing it while I'm on the phone. So I know that that's why everyone's you're saying my, this. You're always my multitasker, Karen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. And if that was confusing, and again, you need some written instructions, send an email to Amy. I'm going to pop her email in to um, the chat, and she will get back to you um, tomorrow. Um, Beth, you asked about it. online registration didn't appear to allow you to prioritize sessions. Uh, feel free if you want to prioritize to just shoot Amy and I an email, and we can enter that as a manual note into CampMinder as we're working through um, uh, in processing everyone's registrations. Jessica, how many sessions are there now? So uh, there's four sessions. The first three sessions are two weeks long and the last session is one, week. Is one week. Someone asked Someone a great question about um, why we were having a one week session and couldn't we flop it? And one of the reasons that we did that again is to make sure that we can safely move people throughout camp and have as many kids come to camp as possible um, and to be able to have that time in between the sessions to be able to clean and disinfect. <clears throat> uh, great question about what we're gonna do special for. Sure. So thank you so much for asking. So um, I was in Tuscan 1997 and I will uh, I will kindly have an argument with anyone to say that my Tusk was the best summer ever. And I know that for everyone who's ever been in Tusk or a senior camper that they wanna have their best summer ever. We recognize that Tusk 20 lost their summer and now things are gonna look different. And as soon as we get through this registration, Amy and Neil and I are going to work really hard to make sure that our programming is superb. Um, so while I don't know that I can answer what we're going to do special quite yet, what I can tell you is that we know we want to do things differently. We know that we want to have our staff involved. Um, I've been having Zoom sessions with them frequently, and we will continue so that we can brainstorm with them on ways to create a really wonderful and meaningful summer. Um, so we're going to make sure that we do different things and that they still have their opportunity to have an amazing summer. And again, while I know it's not what they pictured and that many of them have been waiting since they were seven years old for this, we're still gonna make sure that it's something really, really special. Um, question about um, extra nurses, what about extra physicians? Will there be the same camp doctor or more than one for the entire session? Will they be a pediatric trained doctor? So those are really wonderful questions. Um, Part of what we're working on with our COVID-19 medical committee that I mentioned is creating and figuring out what is the right mix of who we need at camp. Uh, <clears throat> we've learned over the past couple of years where sometimes we might need more of something and sometimes we might need less of something. And so we wanna take all of the things that we know camp um, needs to focus on in terms of just regular daily operations and then be able to support COVID. Um, and so we're going to 
I can't answer whether they'll be there for the entire session uh, because we haven't started reaching out yet. Um, but those are things that we're going to be working on as we're just starting our uh, hiring process over the next couple of weeks. Lisa, thank you so much for your question about having a mental health specialist at camp. Um, so I'm really thrilled to share with all of you that we and are, have a really wonderful partner with Jewish Family Services. Um, we just had a phone call this past week with their um, counseling department and one of their counselors will be able to come out to camp um, and to be able to offer services and programs for our staff to be able to help with training um, and helping with any difficult campers that we might have that need a little bit of extra help. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a, a new and different approach to training. Uh, we're gonna be working with Jewish Family Services over the next couple of weeks to prepare to start working with our young alumni who may be interested in applying to work at camp. And they are going to get on Zooms with our young alumni and talk about what sort of training do they think that they need in order to be able to help support campers who might have mental health concerns. They are gonna talk about what sort of things they see at camp, both for themselves and for their campers. And we're gonna create a really robust training program. Um, I am a licensed clinical social worker by trade. I spent 13 years working in the healthcare field before I came to the JCC. And so this is a topic that's really important to me. So I'm feeling, I feel very confident that with our partnership with Jewish Family Services and with one of our nurses that we hire, we hope to have a mental health background or that be their certification and their specialty of choice that we're gonna be able to take good care of our campers. Um, we know now more than ever, our campers are going to come to camp next summer and life is going to look different for them. And whether they have, they come to camp with a pre-existing diagnosis or there's new things going on from being at home, every kid is going to come to camp with some things that we're gonna work through as well as our staff. And so you have my word that um, mental health is at the top of our, our priority. Um, we also have uh, Sharon Shafrir, who is the JCC's inclusion director. And once we get through our application process, uh, you will have the opportunity if you are concerned about your camper coming to camp and they may have some mental health concerns or you want to talk about them adjusting, Sharon is going to be a direct resource and she will be working with our leadership staff um, to be able to help plan. So we've, we've got a really great team um, and I'm feeling really great about our ability to be able to support our campers this summer. Hey, Laurie, I got a question for you. Yeah. It's Josh Cantor. Hey, Josh. Um, so my eldest <laughs> Noah, right, should have been a CIT in 2020. I, we've gotten sort of mixed messages about his age group. Are they yeah. going to be CITs this year? Are they going to be junior counselors? Yep. Should they be going, should he be, should we be going to the Wednesday session to no, hear about so him? No, he should be, so he is eligible to apply to be a junior counselor. He, sh if he didn't receive an email from me inviting him to this week's um, se session on learning about what our structure is going to look like for uh, um, our staff structure and how to apply for camp, that's on Thursday night. If he does not have that link, then email me and I will send it to you. I have a question. Hi. Hi, I'm Lisa. Hi, Wexler family. Um, so I have a question about like more about Tuss and like staying in Mohawk. How are you gonna do it with like how, like, how many campers per cabin? Mm -hmm. Great, great question. So we are really lucky that we are able to fit every single Tufts camper who was scheduled to come in 2020 this summer. No one will be turned away. So it depends on the cabin, it's between six to eight. We have enough space, every single person who wants to come that was registered for 2020, they've got a spot for 2021. So how we divide you up and who is in which bunk, we'll yeah. work on that as a team, we'll figure it out. We figured out harder things before. We're going to figure it out together, okay? Um, okay. And then I also have another question. Yeah. 
okay this is like kind of silly but like is there still gonna be canteen <laughs> i love you wexler family of course we'll still have canteen <laughs> okay good I, I just wanted to make sure what would camp be without canteen i know and like if you can get the israeli candy back you'll be my favorite person ever i will work on that for you thank you um, Great question just came in. If kids go home for intercession, will they need to get COVID tested in those two days before coming back to camp? So this is one of the questions that I put in the category of, this is why we're gonna to put together our COVID-19 medical committee. I have answers of what I think we could say, but I really wanna work with, our me with medical experts to make sure that we're understanding new research as it comes out and come up with that decision together. So, um, I, I think it's way too early to know the answer and we will definitely loop back with you as we build this committee and start to put together our playbook. Other questions? Okay. I, I wanna thank you all from the bottom of my heart um, on behalf of Amy and Neil and myself, the CSL Advisory Council, the JCC Board of Directors. Um, we really appreciate you taking a chance on us in the middle of what is a really difficult time in our lives uh, and thinking about camp for 2021. Oh, okay, we've got a couple of questions. So I'll pause on my goodbye. Um, uh, when will campers know which weeks they will will have been accepted to attend. So Beth, we are closing early bird registration on the 15th and we are opening general registration on the 18th. You will know between the 16th and the 17th that Monday and Tuesday, you will hear from us and know so that we'll know uh, how we can open up general registration. So our priority is to our 2019 and our 2020 campers. Um, and so you guys will hear from us over those couple of days. Um, how is intercession going to look if they decide to stay? So intercession is going to be more of an outdoor camping type experience. Um, we, we're going to model after our own TU Lean program. Uh, this is going to be a new, a new adventure for us, but we're really, so I don't have every detail, but we're excited that the kids will be tent camping at camp, learning to cook food, their own food, of course, COVID safe. Um, we'll be going on hikes. They'll be learning about how to make fires, putting their tents together. Uh, because we are not going to be taking kids outside of camp in vans to go on hiking trips, we're hoping that this will um, feel a little bit like a camping trip, but staying in, staying in camp. Uh, what happens to Tusk intercession if there's no trip? So for Tusk, you will never leave. And your programming during those couple of days will be some of those really special times when there's not very many people at camp. I don't have the answer to what it's gonna look like yet, um, but we will make sure that we do some special things during that time. Siblings, great question. If you have a younger child who is entering fourth grade or is ready to attend camp and you are a 2019, 2020, 20 camper, you are welcome as a family that's currently has a current camper to register your kid. So you're good. If you have any trouble, email the one and only Amy, please be patient with her. Um, but you're more than welcome to continue your family and to we will try to keep them together. We are definitely going to be Tusk biking. We are definitely going to be biking. Um, whether it's overnights or day trips, bike, 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 we're going to bike more than ever. I already bought my bike. I'm really excited to bike with, with Tusk. Um, biking is going to be a huge component of our summer. Any other questions? Yes, Paula. Hey, Lori, I think you might need to have a special session just for senior campers. Okay, we can definitely do that. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, thoughts? All right, guys, thank you all so much for joining. Um, if there's anything you'd like to talk to, talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, uh, please feel free to reach out and we look forward to keeping in touch. We will have these Zoom sessions frequently, so stay tuned. Thanks everyone, have a great night. Thanks.